Hi friends! Welcome to episode 29 of the Quirky Monday Craft Cast. My name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online as Nadira Tani. Um, if you're a new viewer, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and I hope you enjoy today's episode. Um, I'm coming to you today, well what is today's date? Um, March 7th? That, that might be correct. Um, but today is Wednesday, I believe it's March 7th, um, and I'm coming to you from my home in Central Florida, where it's a pretty nice day. Yes, a little breezy, but nice. So let's jump right into the crafting. Today, I have a finished object. Y'all, I'm so happy. Hallelujah. The Devil Snare socks are finished. I'm so excited about it. So, I don't even know which one of these was the first and which one was the second, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, there were a couple snags um, with this sock. First, I knit the first sock, finished it all the way to the toe, only to discover that it was like half an inch too long. So I just put it aside and was like, you know what? I'm just gonna move on to the second sock. Moved on to the second sock and I'm like knitting the heel and somehow I missed, like I do a wrap and turn heel, wrap and turn short row heel. Somehow I missed wrapping one of my stitches or picking up one of the wraps or something. My count was off and I was like, I just wrapped another step stitch and kept it pushing. I was like, no, we are not ripping out this heel. No. So then I knit the second sock, the second foot, um, did it five rows longer than the first sock, finished the toe, tried it on, it was good. And I wanted to just be like, done. I don't care that they're not the same length. But then, the little voice inside said, Kalisha, if they're not the same length, you're not going to wear them or you're gonna be irritated every time you wear them. So just go ahead and fix the first sock. So I picked out the Kitchener stitch, ripped out the toe. I ended up ripping back too far, so I had to like recount the whole foot. Um, and yeah, because the first, the first foot was too short, I ended up knitting out all of the yarn that was originally in that and then having to tie on, oh, that's how I can tell which one is next, or first or second. I had to tie on um, extra yarn for the, um, to finish that, that one. Oh, well, I don't care. One of these, they're done, I don't care. What else can be said? What can be said that best describes my experience with these socks? The lace took forever. I was, it's a, a 10 row repeat, so I was never able to memorize it. I got to the point where um, I could anticipate what was coming next, but because the rows don't repeat in, like within the 10 rows, they don't repeat exactly. Like you have two rows that do something and then the beginnings and the ends of the rows are, you can do those. But in the middle, there's like other shenanigans that take place. So, but yeah, they're done. Praise the Lord. Um, the yarn is um, Happy Fuzzy Yarn. The colorway is Tree Frog and it is the Cory Sock base. So it's 75% um, Corydale Superwash and 25% Nylon. And it's, I don't know if it was the, the yarn that made the sock too long because I knit it to like my, my regular sock foot length, which is like 75 rows. Um, but 
I don't know. It was an interesting experience. I have this much left. I did not weigh it, but it's a good amount. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else I really wanted to say about these socks. Again, that's Devil Snare um, Socks by Erica Luter. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, Erica Luter is the one who does like a bajillion Harry Potter themed socks. So that's it. I will be entering these into the the spring spring knit along, spring make along. Um, that's being hosted by Jade of So Perfect Pearls. So I'll be entering these because this color just says spring to me. And yeah, yeah. So that's really my my biggest finished object um, that I'm like most excited about, y'all. I cannot express how excited I am to have those socks off my needles. But yes, I do have another finished object, but I'll show it to you when I talk about the work in progress that's in it. It's a bag that I made, but um, I'll show that to you in a minute. Um, also, this is an old finished object. This is probably, this shawl is probably maybe three years old now, but this is a lace crocheted shawl pattern that I came up with um, a few years ago. Um, I wanted something that was light, rectangular shaped, and like dainty to wear like to church, you know, with my church dresses and everything. Um, so I came up with this. It, I'm glad that you cannot see in the camera, but it is covered in Tootie's little black hairs. But um, yeah, it is called the Andromeda Shawl. And I don't know, I might write the pattern up. I don't know. But I decided I was sitting out here with just just my t-shirt on and it was a little breezy. So I went and grabbed it. Um, that's that. I also made the hat that I'm wearing. It's called the Orion hat, primarily because Orion is my favorite constellation. This is my favorite hat to wear. It is a mesh, like, Tam style hat. So um, I used to wear a lot of, like, bulky weight Tam style hats like this when I lived in Alabama. And then I moved to Florida, and I decided since I did not want to have a heat stroke, I needed to come up with a hat pattern. Um, that had the same kind of shape, you know, to keep all of my twists and big hair in, um, but not cause me to overheat. So that's why we have this, this uh, deal going on here. And this is pretty much like whenever you see me wearing a hat, like a crochet hat like this, it's this pattern. I, I just, I made it in like every single color that I own. So yes, Orion hat, Andromeda shawl, Devil Snare socks, whoop de whoop wop de wop. Let's move right along to works in progress. And the first work in progress I have, I'm super excited about. So last episode, I showed you the um, Ba yarn that I bought to make a hat for my mom. It is um, Ba Yarn Manhattan and it is the Burmese Ruby colorway, 70% uh, Merino, 30% Cashmere. And I was kind of like brainstorming ideas and stuff um, for this hat. I decided that I wanted to make her a cabled hat. So I went on Ravelry to you know find a hat that I liked, but recently I have really been drawn more towards making up my own patterns and my own designs as opposed to making other people's things. Um, so, that being said, 
I have started the hat for my mom. It does not have a name yet, but um, I have a kind of idea of where I want it to go name-wise. But this is the hat. Oh, it looks so pretty. So you have two cables. This one is a four-strand braided cable, and then this one is a three-strand braid. So it alternates four, a solid block, three, solid block, four, and then, of course, on the back, it's opposite. So I really enjoy this yarn. <laughs> it is so squishy. Um, I am holding it double because um, the yarn is a fingering weight. So I'm holding it double to approximate about a sport slash DK weight. And when I tell you like the difference in your hand from this, like the Cordale to the Merino Cashmere, it's so crazy. Like I had, I had Lamar like touch them and I said, hey, feel this and then feel this. And when he felt this one, he was like, wow, it feels, moisturized <laughs> it was like it feels like somebody put lotion or something on the fibers because they were so smooth so you can imagine like the difference in the knitting experience going from that like more toothy like mm, wool to this one which is more like that's the sound that cashmere and merino make in my head. <clears throat> so yeah, um, I am loving this pattern. Um, I asked my mom if she wanted a sneak peek and she said no. So she is going to torture me and make me keep this a secret from her. Um, and Yes, I'll be seeing her at the end of the month, so this needs to hurry up and get finished. Um, this is actually the front here, so I'm keeping track of my cable rows, and then this little progress keeper here is a seashell progress keeper that I made, and this shell is from Rehoboth Beach in Delaware. So, yes. So I'm going to move this up so that the next time you see it, if it is not finished, it will be, you'll be able to see how much I was able to get done in like the week. Cause guys, I'm still going weekly with these uploads. Ooh, ooh. I'm so proud of myself. So yes, that is my mom's hat. I am knitting it on my Chalgu Red Lace, um, four millimeter needles and yeah oh I do have a question so somebody may be able to give me a some uh, a tip but you see how this row of um, knit stitches like right after no I'd be knitting this way so this is the last row of knit stitches um, before I get to the pearls so this one is really loose. And I've read, I've read that you can like twist that stitch and then untwist it on the next round or something to keep it tighter, but that feels like a lot to be doing and a lot to remember to do. Um, so if anybody has any other tips on how you can tighten up that last um, knit stitch before a purl stitch, let me know because I mean, it doesn't bother me a lot, a lot, but I mean, it could be better. So, and I'm actually getting faster with the cabling. This is only the second time that I've done knitted cables and, um, and I'm really enjoying it. I decided not to try my hand at, um, knitting the cables without a cable needle because that was way too stressful the first time I did that. So yes, 
the next um, work in progress I have is in the bag that I mentioned in my finished object se section. So, this is the bag. <laughs> it's ginormous. And, um, yeah, it's ginormous because I am crocheting a top-down raglan cardigan um, with no pattern, BT dubs. So I have, I'm using Karen one pound. So I have this whole thing in here. Um, and I have another ball of it in the house. But this is how far I am so far. I have a little bolero. Ta-da! There we go. So it fits wonderfully see my increases there I've already split for the sleeves and I'm working down the body um, this is going to now be my entry for the spring garment cow that Zakia at the lady wing crafts podcast is hosting because that first cardigan that we did no I'm not no even though it's finished I'm not even gonna, we're not gonna acknowledge that. We're not. So this is going to be my um, spring garment cow cardigan. So my plan is to do the whole body and the sleeves in this green, which I love. This is like the best green. Um, he was in the bushes again. Why are you in the bushes? Are you getting in touch with your wild side, Kiva? Kiva, she's ignoring me. You okay? Okay, go play. Just, just don't get bit by anything. I don't wanna go to the vet today. All right. So, the whole body is going to be this green. It's gonna be solid. And then I'm going to have button bands, but no buttons. What are those called? Anyway, buttonless button bands down the front. And my plan is to have like a cable motif going down the front of each button band. And the cables are going to be white, I think. And then the background will be this green. So it'll be this like high contrast white cable going down the front and then the the cuffs of the sleeves will be in that white as well. And I think that's all the white I'm gonna put. I think the bottom waist, or the, the bottom um, ribbing is gonna be in this green. But um, yeah, so that's the idea for this. Um, I actually recently um, started watching the uh, Quo podcast uh, by Quaylen, and he did a video Sorry, there's Kiva hairs on here. He did a video about the two color cables and I was watching it and I was like, why did I never think to do that? But um, I have done cabled, crochet cables before. So changing the color in them, it was like when he was explaining it, it was just like a really duh moment for me. So I'm not married to the idea of the white cables. I might, um, go with something a little bit less contrasty than like a bright white um, maybe like a cream I don't know but that is that is my progress on it I'm really proud of how it's going the the one thing though that I do want to talk about this Karen it's it's 100 100% acrylic and it's like a board so um, this will definitely um, get washed and dried and possibly also steam blocked I think just ha like washing it and drying it will soften up the acrylic enough to give it that drape um, so that I don't have to kill it with an iron but um, yes and you can see let's see if it'll flip around nope 
This is the Progress Keeper that I'll have on it. A little shamrock. So this is, is going to be a double dip project. Um, I already mentioned the spring garment cowl that Zakia of Lady Wing Crafts is hosting. Um, it's also going to go in the Patty's Day cowl that Grace of um, Babel's Traveling Yarn is hosting. Because, I mean, like, one cannot crochet with this color green in March and not do some sort of St. Patrick's Day something or another. So this, I want to have it done, um, of course, by the end of the month, because um, I'm, just, I'm just really excited to wear it. So this is going back in this ginormous bag, which I will give you some more details about um, in a second. So I'm keeping lots of notes on both of those projects since they're kind of like Kalisha designed. They're not kind of Kalisha designed, they are Kalisha designed. So my last work in progress is the Cumulus Afro um, tote bag that I was talking about a couple of episodes back. So I have sketched out my idea on this tote bag. I got this, what is that, smuts? I got this bag from Hobby Lobby. I think it was like $5. So this is the bag so far. And I have to work on the silhouette because I'm actually working from a picture that I took of myself, which I'll put up here. Um, but I I want this, the, the silhouette's not quite right. But um, I have the, the afro shape in and then I'm going to put big letters of cumulus on it. So my idea so far is the silhouette and the afro is most likely going to be solid black. And then the letters, I don't know what color I want them to be. I'm leaning toward gold, that might be it, um, but definitely some sort of metallic. So either like a gold or maybe a bronze would look really cool in there. And then I haven't decided if I'm going to do any additional painting around it or if it was just going to be that one graphic. So that is the, um, my last work in progress. And I'm really excited about it. I love it. I love it. So, we will tuck this away. Where am I gonna put it? I'm gonna put it over here. My tea's gone cold. Whew, and the breeze has, has gotten me. <laughs> Guys, I don't know, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit ridiculous today. All right, so I did not put a maker plan section in my notes because when I wrote them, I did not have any maker plans. However, I was cleaning the bedroom today and came across um, a tote bag that I have. Now this bag, like I thrifted it a while ago and like I loved it. Like I love the, the graphic nature of the print. You know, the size is really good for me. I would just throw everything in there and go. Um, if you look like here, this, the strap started ripping out of the, um, the fabric, so I had to reinforce it there. I ended up having to reinforce all the other um, straps. And then this started happening. So I was like, well, I guess I'll just throw it away. And being the crafty girl that I am, I was gonna say like crafty hoarder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, being the crafty girl that I am, I did not immediately throw it away because I was like, well, maybe I can fix it. So instead of fixing it, what I have decided to do, and that's the back, I cut the fabric off the front because this is what I really liked about the bag. So I cut the fabric off the front. It's this really cool woven and I am going to make a project bag out of it. 
So I have this, and then I'm also gonna cut the back off. Um, I already cut out the um, closures. It had magnetic closures, so I cut those out so that I can reuse those. And I'll probably take one of these handles to be the strap on the side of the bag. So, yeah. That's, that's it. So, you know, reduce, reuse, recycle. That's what I learned at SeaWorld. So that is the only maker plan. So I will finish deconstructing this today, um, press out the pieces, and I'll probably finish this tonight, to be honest. So that takes us in to stash positions. And you already got a glimpse of one. I went to Ikea yesterday, all by myself, and it was great <laughs> I had a really good time um, although I do this thing where I don't know if anybody else does it or if this happens to anybody else but um, when I'm by myself in like public places um, I tend to get a little bit stressed out and when I get stressed out um, I almost kind of go tunnel vision and I don't, I feel like that must have something to do with anxiety in some sort of way, but um, that was definitely happening to me in Ikea, so I would have to stop and like calm myself down because I was like, I don't want to miss these cool things that I'm looking at. Um, but yeah, I went in there for a, a tea strainer, no, a tea infuser, that's what it is. And um, because I bought one at Ikea and the house ate it, I have no idea where, where it's gone. Um, and one of my other stash positions that I'm gonna show you is this tea that is just so delicious. I've been drinking it since I bought it. Um, but the thing about it is it's a rooibos tea. So if you've ever had like loose leaf rooibos tea, um, rooibos is a bush. So it's like sticks and stuff <laughs> in your tea. And the infuser that I had, um, the holes were letting like legitimate stick bits into my tea. So I'd be drinking it and just like <laughs> and, and nobody wants to drink tea and choke on it. Like you want to drink tea and be classy with your pinky out and stuff, right? So I went to go get a new infuser. And I found the little infuser um, that I had the first time. And then next to it, I saw this. And I had to get this instead. So this is a cute little teapot. It's glass, which I really like, so it's gonna be easy to clean. Um, the top comes off, if I could get it, hello. The top comes off and the little infuser bucket can be taken out, but I just leave it in there. I've actually, this is the, the rooibos tea that I was telling you about. I have brewed this, I wanna say three, three times like these same leaves three times um, because it's an herbal tea so you can't burn it. So I got that and I got this and I'm so excited about my little teapot. The only thing, oh and this is probably, uh oh stuff is falling. This is probably a maker plan too. I need to do like a cozy on this because when you put the hot water in here um, like you see my fingers touch it. I burned myself a couple times So I think I'm gonna make like a little cozy to go around it. Although I love how clean it looks just I don't know maybe I'll make like a short cozy. I don't know I'm gonna make something because I don't want to burn myself every time I pick it up Which has happened and I've only had it for one day The third thing that I got at Ikea is actually this. This, in its original life, was a cushion cover. And I saw it and I was like, oh, that's a bag. And it already has a zipper in it? Bet. I'm gonna make a giant project bag. So I just box the bottom. It has like a six inch um, deep box bottom. And yeah. It is ginormous, 
Um, I put a handle on it. I, I mean, I'm not going to be like walking around with this, making this project, but I mean, it's better to have a handle than not to have one. So, um, yeah. And this particular cushion cover was on sale. I think regularly it was like $6, but it was on clearance for $3. So I was like, I like it. I'm really digging gray right now. So, yeah. I like it a lot. Um, I love it when I find things and am able to like refashion it into something else. Um, so yeah, love that. Um, we're still in stash. We're still in stash acquisitions, guys. So my birthday was last week. Nope, my birthday was two weeks ago. Week and a half, something like that. Two Saturdays ago was my birthday. And um, I think Saturday night, my birthday Saturday night, I went to Joann's and I got this. Um, I really like it. It's got like a, a leathery type of bottom. Um, and it says, I make pretty things, which I totally do. Um, and I just have my other little goodies in here. So, which way am I going to go about this? Before my birthday, I had gone to one of my local yarn shops in Claremont called The Barn Yarn. And um, to get a couple things and, you know, just mosey around. Do you really need a real, like hardcore reason to go to a yarn shop? Not really. So right outside of her shop, she has one of the um, little free libraries, I think is what it's called. But um, if you have them in your area, they're like little houses um, where inside, like you open it and inside it has like books that people have put in there, like donate. You can take a book to read it and then you, you know, come and put more books in there. So I got this book. The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Um, I am two chapters in and so far it's really good. Um, I like Neil Gaiman because of Coraline. And I actually have a couple of his other books like on my wish list on my library app. Um, I really wanna read Anansi, what is it? Anansi Boys and American Gods, I think. I wanna read those. But um, the writing is really good. Of course, I mean, you expect nothing less from Neil Gaiman. So when I finish this, I will have more to tell you about. And I definitely want to go through my book stash and gather up some to put at in her um, free little library. And then there's another one in um, Winter Garden that I can donate to. So that's kind of a stash acquisition. And then I have, were all of these the same day? Yes. So last week I had gone to um, Mount Dora, downtown Mount Dora. And it's so cute there. There's like all kinds of little shops and things. And I went there specifically to go to this gem, gemstone and crystal shop because um, I sent a message to Susan of the Knit Lib podcast because in um, in one of her knit along like prizes, she gave me a um, what was it rose? I can't remember. I put it at the bottom, but um, she gave me a gemstone, and it just kind of like reopened my interest in them and I'm a collector guys I just need to come to grips with the fact that I collect stuff so um, when she reawakened my interest in gemstones and crystals I googled gemstones crystal stores near me and this one came up in Mount Dora so I was like okay I'll go down there maybe spend an afternoon walking around explore the shops and stuff like that so I have my little crystals in this little bag I made and when I purchased, I purchased three, yes, 
three. Can I count? One, two, three. Yes. I purchased three and um, the shop owner asked me if I wanted like a cleansing mix on them, which was like a mix of herbs. There was like lavender and sage and rose hips and a couple other things in it. And I was like, sure. So she put that on and I loved how it smelled. Um, so I kept, I made like this organza bag and put the, the cleansing mix in there along with some more dried lavender because I love lavender. So I purchased an amethyst. A a piece of rough rainbow moonstone. Now, the only stone that I specifically wanted when I went to the store to the store was a regular moonstone, but they were all sold out. And I was in there like, who are all these people buying up all of the moonstone? But come to think of it, we did just have like a whole lot of stuff happening with the moon. So I'm sure that that's why they were sold out of Moonstone. So I still want to go back and get, um, get a piece. But this, this particular piece of um, Rainbow Moonstone, I really liked. And I think, I don't know, I think it may be the texture that I like. Because when I picked it up in the store, I started doing this just rolling it around in my fingers. And whenever I have it in my hand, that's what I automatically want to do, is just roll it around in my fingers and just feel the different textures and edges and everything. So that's really cool. The last piece that I got is a piece of Zebra Jasper. And this one, this one was really interesting for me because the way the store was set up, they had um, like trays with all of the gemstones and everything and like little cards explaining what they were and their properties and everything like that. And it wasn't a big store. So there were maybe like four shelving bits that were like this wide and each one of them had like three levels. And then behind there was just kind of like a display of different um, different um, crystals and gemstones and everything. And so it wasn't it, it wasn't like there was an overwhelming amount of um, you know pieces in there, but somehow I I was in the store for like an hour, I think, just like touching everything and you know trying to make my decision as to what I was going to get and somehow I managed to overlook this particular stone right up until I was about to leave and I just I turned around and I glanced and I saw it and it wasn't like it wasn't like there was just one in the container like the container was full I don't know how I managed to overlook this or not see them but um, when I, I took a closer look and I looked at the little card, it was saying that this particular stone is good for alleviating anxiety and depression, which I found cool. So this just makes me think about like if I'm feeling anxious or something like that, it, it's a reminder to do like the the self-talk and calm myself down and address what's making me feel anxious and everything like that so kind of like a a reminder and I really like the shape of this one like this was the first one that I picked up it was the first one that um, that I really saw and I was like oh maybe I should just look at the other ones and see if there's one that I like better so I put it back and I like went through the rest of them and then I was like, no, it's that one. So this is the one that came home with me. And like I said, they are all living in my little bag. 
with all of their deliciously smelling herbs. So that's that. That was the whole reason that I went to Mount Dora. But I also ended up um, like shopping around because this store, their hours um, said 1230-ish <laughs> until five. So I was like, hmm, that's interesting. So I got there, or no, it was 12-ish. So I got there at like 1230 and they were still closed. So I was like, okay, so I'll just go walk around. And um, I came back at like one and they were still closed. So then I went to their um, Instagram, or not their Instagram, their Facebook, and it was saying that they weren't opening that day until 3.30-ish. So I decided to just walk around downtown Mount Dora. Um, I went to the tea shop. Um, I went to a couple thrift stores, some antique stores, stuff like that. And then when I came back, um, it was just a couple minutes before they actually opened, which was probably around 3.50. But I mean, they said 3.30-ish. So, whilst I was walking around, I went to a thrift store, and in that thrift store, I found this book, Encyclopedia of Three Crochet Patterns, Stitches, and Designs. And it is a super old book. Okay, not super old because it was it was published or the copyright in it is 1988, which is the same age as my little brother. But I thought what was really cool about this is that it has charts, but all the charts are hand drawn. And I just, I think that's darling. Look at that. So I got this book for a dollar. So that's pretty cool. It's by Doris M. Smith. And yeah, I think I really just got it for the novelty. Um, but there are some like stitch patterns and, and things in here that I haven't seen, um, that I haven't really seen before. So this will be a good addition to my uh, stitch dictionary collection so that as I'm coming up with these different like sweaters and shawls and things I have a wealth of stitches to pull from so then I stopped I went to the tea shop and this is the tea that I'm drinking it's Bonita Peach Roibus Herbal Tea um, and this was from the Tea and Spice Exchange in Mount Dora. This is delicious. Like, I smelled it and I was like, yeah, I like that smell. But then the first time I tasted it, like I got home and immediately brewed a cup. I was just like, oh, I'm gonna go buy a container of this because it's, it's so good. Um, but it is green rooibos with summer fruit and flowers to produce a refreshing caffeine-free blend. Delicious served either hot or iced, which I can tell you is true because I'm the queen of letting her tea go cold. And this is good when it's hot and it's good when it's cold, <laughs> just for me. But um, it's got the green rooibos, orange peels, marigold flowers, strawberries, peach, oh, and then peach, strawberry, and orange flavoring. Delicious. So that is what I'm drinking. I'm almost done with this cup. Mm. Yum. And then I think I only have one last thing to show you. And this is not crafty related, but it is uh, related to my, my obsession with the night sky. I saw this glow in the dark night sky book. Uh, yeah. And I almost couldn't get it because this was in one of those, um, like antique shops where it's like it's like a like a market like there's one building but each booth is owned by a different person so when when I was looking at this I couldn't find a price so um, the lady at the the desk was like well if I can't find a tag or a price I can't sell it because I don't know who it belongs to but as she was looking 
she found this teeny tiny light 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 price written on it so i was like yes. so this is just a like super child friendly book and it has the um it has the constellations and everything as you would see them in each season and i love it so much I love it. And then it has, the last page is about the constellations. And it just kind of gives you like, like a one sentence blurb about each constellation. So for Andromeda, which is who this shawl is, is named for, in Greek legends, Andromeda was the daughter of Cassiopeia and Cepheus. Perseus saved her from the sea monster Cetus. Good to know. So, yeah. And then you've got all the constellations. Well, the winter sky, which is my favorite sky. And then in the front of the book, you have the summer sky. I love it. I haven't gotten to look at it at like at nighttime to see if it actually glows, but like I like cupped my eyes and it glows, but I just, I want to see it like in dark because I think that would be awesome. So stuff like this really makes me feel like whenever Lamar and I do have kids, they're going to have a wealth of star related stuff. Yep. I might mess around and get named after Constellation. I wouldn't do that to my kids. I don't think so. I don't think I would. I might. But I think that's everything that I have for Sash Positions. So the last section I have is this week's edition of Black Fibers, Black Threads. And I have decided that I want to focus more on um, black people who are like currently active in the knitting and crochet and like fiber community. So um, I came across a really cool maker. She is a crochet artist. Her name is Zenobia Bailey, and. I don't even remember how I came across her work, but um, she is based in New York and her she does a lot in tapestry crochet and um, she makes hats and does like big installations and things like that. And one of her, like when you see her work and her aesthetic, you see that she uses these repeated um, motifs and she does a lot with um, concentric circles. And they just look so cool. But she, I think, because I was looking at how the colors um, were playing together and it was very hypnotic but very energetic at the same time. Um, she had a lot of there's a lot of color energy within within the colors that she chooses and in one particular um, circle or mandala which she also uses mandalas as well but um, one particular one she had I think it was like a stripe of red so every other stripe was red but the alternating stripes in between the red was a gradient and I just loved how that looked so I I was really inspired by her use of color and just her embracing of so many colors at the same time, which, which really made me happy when I saw it. So um, as I was looking through um, her body of work as well as some information about her, I took down some notes because there were some points that I did want to make sure to mention. 
Um, I already mentioned that she's a fiber artist in New York. Um, she pulls inspiration from African, Chinese, Native American, Eastern philosophies, and funk aesthetic, which I thought was super cool. And when you see like her, like there was this one picture of her that I was like, yeah, yeah, like, I don't know a whole lot about funk music, but when I saw her, I was like, you would describe her as funky. <laughs> So, um, yes, she has a, um, she has an installation called Mothership One, Sister Paradise's Great Walls of Fire Revival Tent. And I found a picture of that as well. Um, this piece was inspired by the lack of documentation on the enslavement of African Americans. And when I was looking at it, you can see a lot of like textures and um, movement in the work that like harkens back to um, African designs and, and African uh, textiles and everything like that. And while I was looking at at her, um, the different like images of her work, um, it made me really think about how a lot of the um, black artists in general that I have um, I have read about or looked at their work or um, for black poets read their work and everything like that. It's you see a lot where blacks. Um, of the diaspora, a lot of their work is reaching back, trying to make contact with the continent. And it just, it makes me think so much about how, like how far, but yet how close we are as, you know, as black people, how far away from Africa we are, but yet how close we are to Africa. How so many times you, like as creators or as artists, you can you can see like, like bits of Africa trickling into your work. And um, I just found that really fascinating. Um, And it's, it's definitely something that I thought about a lot while looking at Zenobia's um, work. And I also found her, um, her Instagram page. And on there, she focuses a lot on the textures of black hair, which I thought was interesting. Um, I don't know why, because um, I didn't get to go all the way back to like the beginning of her Instagram um, to see like why she started doing that. But that was definitely a, a nice thing to see, um, to see all the different ways that black hair can be styled and, and how many different ways it's, it comes out of one scalp, <laughs> for lack of a better way to say it. But um, I think the biggest takeaway that I had from looking at um, Zenobia's work was the energy and the emotion that I felt when looking at it. And I want, that's something that I want for people to experience when they look at my work. Like, back in the day when, <laughs> back in the day, when I was like writing a lot, like, um, writing a lot more poetry, there are poems that I go back and I can read and I still feel the emotions that I was feeling at the time of writing them. Like it's infused into the words and into how I put those words together. And I kind of want to do the same thing or I want to cultivate the same thing in my, um, my fiber work. Like I want 
you know, if something is created um, to channel a certain story, um, I want to be able to, to, in some way, infuse a, infuse that story within the piece. Um, and I know that whenever I create something, I personally am going to have a stronger emotional attachment to that thing just because I know the whole story and the feeling and the emotions that I was feeling when I created it. But I just hope that in some way a small bit of that can be translated to someone else who is viewing my work or reading my work or recreating my work, you know? So that's kind of the the thought process that, or the the thought storm that happened when I was um, being introduced to Zenobia's work. And um, I do want to try playing around with color the way that she did, or the way that she does. Um, and because I, I, I tend to play it, I think I tend to play it safe with my colors. Um, I tend to not go too far out. I think the, the farthest out that I have gone with colors is that pink sweater that I made. I'll put up a, a picture if you're a new viewer and never seen it. But um, I think that's the farthest out that I have gone with colors. And it was still not that far because it was solid, you know. So I want to try um, kind of channeling the Zenobia Bailey spirit into a project. So we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah. But um, I do want to do some more... Um, like visual research on her, um, looking at her different um, creations. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can find um, more of them, but they definitely, they definitely had that energy, like that kind of energy that's like not jarring, but it makes you want to get up and it makes you want to move and you can see, like you can almost see the colors like dancing around the circles um, that she's created. And I just love it. So I hope that inspires you to go and check out her work. Um, again, her name is Zenobia Bailey. Um, she does have a website, but um, I did find more of her work or more images of her work through um, just an image, a Google image search. Um, I was able to find more of her work there because her website, I think, is more of like a personal blog kind of thing. Um, so, yes, definitely Google her look at her work, look at how she works with colors, and I hope that that is a way, or I hope that you can pull inspiration from your for your own creativity from her work. So, I think that is all that I wanted to say today. That's all that I wanted to share. Yes. Um, I would like to thank you for watching today's episode. I hope that you were able to um, find something inspiring in the different things that I was sharing with you today. Um, please leave a comment down below of something good that happened to you this week so that we can share that positivity. Um, my positive thing this week so far has been my trip to Ikea. I had a lot of fun there. Um, and I am gonna go and I don't know. I'll probably go work on my mom's hat because that's bringing me a lot of joy right now. So peace. Have a great day. Um, thank you for being here and being a part of my, my world. Bye.